Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Art of MMA, the podcast. I'm your host, Mike Ginn. Uh, we got a lot to get to this week. Uh, got the normal uh, day ones joining me, uh, Brandon and Sergio. Got a special guest as well. But before we get to any of that, please, please, please take two seconds. Hit like, hit subscribe. Let us know you're watching. Uh, let us know you care. That goes a long way to getting some sponsors and keeping this show uh, with the lights on. So before we uh, get to anything else, uh, let you know a couple other things. Uh, we do have a uh, brand new podcast coming later this week. Uh, we're going to be doing an interview series starting on Thursdays. Um, so we're going to keep the roundtables on Tuesday and do the interviews on Thursdays to give you guys even more content. Now that all that's said, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a special guest this week. I'm talking about Shorty Rock, Sean Santella, one of the best flyweights in the entire world, best kept secret, I like to call him. Uh, Shorty, how you doing, buddy? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no doubt. Always been a good friend of Art of MMA. I think we've interviewed, what, like three times now? Yeah. <laughs> Eric yeah. always reached out to you first. I love that. Um, and then also we're joined by our day one. So I'm talking about uh, the savage Sergio Da Silva. Sergio, how you doing, buddy? What's up, Mike? Thanks for having me again, man. Always, always, always a pleasure. And based on uh, football records, we're not going to talk shit about his Jets this week. Nah, man. You you just <laughs> don't don't even go there, bro. Leave that out, man. I'm just I'm I'm in a good mood. I'm seeing my man Sean. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to ruin that, bro? Don't worry. By the end of the episode, I'm gonna have a fight schedule between the two of you. Um, also joining me another day one. I'm talking about the mechanic, uh, badass kickboxer Brandon Gatino. Brandon, what's up, buddy? Hey, man. Thanks for having me again, man. It's always good to be around you guys. Always, always. Uh, get a little bit of late start today, so I'm just going to jump right into everything. Um, this was actually a topic Eddie wanted to talk about last week, so I wish we could get him on for it. But uh, the big news this week uh, has been more about social media and shit talking. Uh, I'm talking about John Jones, uh, Izzy, uh, going back and forth, Adesanya. I have two questions. One, is this fight ever going to happen, or is this just going to be social media bullshit? And two... If it does happen, how does John Jones not just like destroy him? But that's my opinion. Let's go ahead and start off with the guest of honor, Shorty. What do you think? Um, I know you I don't that think it's gonna more. happen. I honestly don't think it's gonna happen because I know Jones was talking about going up. Um, and I think if it did happen, I think Jones would dominate him. I think Jones is a better version of Izzy, that's more well versed in wrestling and submissions. And I just think he's too big, you know. I know he's had some lackluster performances where he's kind of took his foot off the the um, the gas lately. Um, but I think if if uh, if he wanted to, I think he could probably finish him within three rounds. Yeah, I think I think Jones isn't what he used to be, but I also don't think he was as motivated as he was before either. Right, Sergio, what do you think? I mean, I, I, it's a waste of time for me to even say anything because Sean literally said word for word what I was going to say. Uh, John Jones, too big, too fast, too strong. You've never been a lack of words. Or the, the, you know, <laughs> I mean, listen, I think uh, I my same, I have the same uh, breakdown as Sean. I think that he's a better, bigger, stronger version of Izzy. And I think that he already tweeted it the other day. He goes, if you think I'm going to stand in front of you and get into a kickboxing match, you're out of your mind, And which what I think he'd do, especially if they were to get into a clinch. I think he'd literally – I think it would be a lot more one-sided than people think. I don't even think it would be close. And Sean gave him within three rounds, I think, the first round. I think he just takes him down, and I, I don't think Izzy gets up for that, man. And Jones has never been a stupid fighter. Jones yeah, exactly. He's not gonna. Yeah, he's not gonna sit there and try to pick him apart on the feet. I think he's literally gonna close. He's just so big, man. How does Izzy stay? You know, keep him off him. And if I think the fight goes to the ground, I think he. I. I, I don't see Izzy getting up at all. Mm -hmm. Those elbows will just rain down. Do I think. I think I, honestly, I think if he gets one take down, I think the fight's over. Brandon. Uh. I do think the fight will happen because I think Izzy will will chase him because he's even talked about going up to heavyweight. They've been talking speed. about it a couple of years now. Yeah, but but I mean, but I mean, I mean, if Jones wanted to fight at heavyweight, I think Izzy would fight him there. Fight him at two hundred five, he fight him there. Now, based what what the what these two guys have said, I think it's semi true. Like if it, if it's just a stand up, I think Izzy can take him. I think he's a better striker. But again, Jones isn't dumb. Jones. Well, you would think he would be smart and take him down. But then again, we thought that's what we thought Costa would do too, would take him down, but Costa didn't. So I don't know. It's just one of those things was like, man, I guess when it's time to really get into the fight, 
<laughs> you just got to see what happens. You know, I'm still waiting to hear the other shoe drop on the whole Costa thing because when it all happened, we all thought the lights were just too big for him. But he kept hinting, like he didn't make the excuse, but he hinted that something happened right before the fight. So I'm kind of curious when the news eventually does come out for that. I don't yep. think it makes any difference of what happened during the fight, but just for my curiosity's sake, I want to know what happened before that fight. Yeah. Like the fact I think that he Jones kind of is dropped just too smart of a fighter, and I think his camp is is too good at coming up with a game plan. And I think Jones he doesn't still take follows risks. game plans. Yeah, he doesn't so take I don't, risks. I don't think it'll come out to be like a strike measurement where he's got to prove that he's better standing. I think when it comes down to it, he'll end up he would end up taking him down pretty much at will, and that would be the fight. Yeah. So they've had a lot of funny back and forths. What do you guys think was probably <laughs> the funniest so far? Like, I know that Jones finally admits to hiding under the ring. That was kind of like something we all knew, but that he never said out loud. Now Izzy's like just dropping all the Jones secret, secrets out on the internet. So if this fight never happens, at least at the bright side, we're like thoroughly entertained. I think Jones is just being a troll right now, man. I think he's just at home. He's not. He doesn't have any fights booked. He's just like, let me mess around with these I guys. I think he's trying to make some money off this. I think he's trying to go back and forth with him to build. I think that's the, the easiest. I think that's the easiest fight for him, to be honest with you. I'd rather <laughs> fight. I'd, I'd rather fight a a, a, a a small Izzy than a big ass Ngano on a heavyweight. I honestly think both those fights are easy for him. I think the fight that's hard for him is Stipe. I think Stipe can do everything. But I think but I, but I, throws such wild punches I don't think Stipe could strike with him. I don't think Stipe would be able to strike with Jones. But yeah, he he's, too long. he's too I long. I think he man. could take damage good, but I don't think he's going to be able to strike with him. I think Stipe is a lot bigger than people think he is. Though. I, I think the toughest fight for him is Ngano. That's the guy I wouldn't want to fight from Jones. I'm just trying to put myself in his position right now. And I think the most dangerous fight for him is Francisco Francis Ngano. I think Ngano's thing is that if he clips you, you're going to like Mike Tyson. Like if he hits you. But I still think one takedown... And that fight's done too. Yeah, I think I think Jones knows how to beat Ngano. His eyes lit up with money when he saw first saw Ngano like winning again, and they started going back and forth. Because Jones can throw a punch more accurately. He's not going to get in a fight like a like a fist fight like that. He's going like Shorty said, he's going to take him down. I, I don't. You saw what Stipe did to Ngano, just holding him down in the mat, just picking him apart. I don't think a Stipe and Ngano fight's going any different than that either. I think when they fight again, I think he's Stipe is going to dominate him again. Yeah, I agree. And uh, the other big news, I guess it's been going on for a couple weeks now, but the other story kind of going around right now. I, I, I do believe Poirier McGregor 2 will happen. I think McGregor is done being bored at home, so he's ready to fight again. But I, I, he wants it in 2020. UFC offered it in 21. We did have two main events drop out in both November and December, so it is possible. Um, Poirier said he definitely wants to fight in 2020 also. Seems like everybody's on board, but Dana, uh, Brandon, what do you, you think is going to happen in 2020, or you think we got to wait till 21 for that fight? Nah, I think it happens in 2020 because, like you said, you got two cards, two main events that already fell through. They're, I think, they both said that they're down for it. I think there was what the the November 12th was one of them, and I think like December 21st was the other. Oh no, uh, December 12th. I think it's backwards. So the other one, November 21st something, and then December 12th. Yeah, yeah. Burns, way, like I know said, the Usman Burns for... card fell apart. Yeah, like, like I said, man, I mean, they, they need a main event. You know, Conor McGregor is, I guess you want to say, you know, their biggest star. He wants to fight. I don't know why, I don't know why Dana, Dana would say no. And if Dustin, and if Dustin, apparently, I think, already signed the contract, so. You know Dana holds grudges, though, so he might still be mad about the DMs leaking out. I don't think it would happen in November because I think they'd want more time to promote it. Not that yeah. they have to really build it up, but. You know, it's not something that you're just going to be like, oh, by the way, next weekend we're going to have these two guys fight, you know? So I think the longer, you know, the the more reasonable one would be December or, you know, 2021. I think it's going to be December. What do you think, Sergio? I'm going to say December only because that's what Connor wants. And Connor gets what Connor wants. Unfortunately, that's the way, the, that's the name of the game right now. I think he's the UFC promoter, not not the other way around. And I think uh, if he wants to fight this year, he's going to fight this year one way or another. I think it's ridiculous what Khabib just said. Uh, Khabib came out and said, he was like, you, they could offer him $5 billion, They could offer him the UFC. There's no way he'll do well, the well, you could say, Well, you could say something and then actually mean it, right? Somebody fight, offers me $5 billion, I'm punching, I'm fighting my mother. Yeah, no. 
I, I think I think Khabib is very principled. I think he believes. Yeah, when he five says billion, five five billion, Mike. That's a big number. Yeah, you put, put that put in front in, of him. Put it in front of him. Yeah, I'll have his whole team. Trust me, I'll be able to talk him. Yeah, out. exactly, exactly. You have you have Putin on the phone. Putin I, I, be like, yeah. you better take that money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he'll fight him, bro. Yeah. Um. So that shit a fucking pay for the entire country. Listen, Khabib is smart yeah. too, bro. Listen, I'm not saying I'm not saying Connor. Uh, kind of beats him. Yeah, I think Khabib beats him again, but it is a risk fight. Um, you know, I think Connor is an intelligent fighter, and I think he knows how important it is to get that one back. And I think there's a lot of money to be made in that fight. And I think Connor could promote that really well, and I think all of Russia would watch that fight. Um, I think Khabib doesn't have anything to prove in that. I think Connor wants that fight more than Khabib wants that fight. I that fight could happen until there's stands, until there's fans in the stands. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That exactly. Yeah. I, I don't think that fight's gonna happen. I really don't. I don't think Connor could be. I think that's just gonna happen in like Russia. I think it's gonna happen in, like in Russia. I think man. Connor will fight him anywhere because I think he would too because he, he wants, wants to that, get that he back. Wants that yeah. Money. yeah, he wants the bag. It's all about the money, man. Because yeah, exactly. In a rematch, if you're already the winner, the only thing that you can gain is financial. Yeah, exactly. They don't right. throw a huge number at him. It's pointless to take the rematch. It's all risk. Very I little. agree. Yeah, I agree. He has nothing. To, he has not. Listen, if he be, if he beats Connor again, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, he's supposed to be Connor. He was gonna take him down and maul him." Now, if Connor comes out and somehow pulls it off and knocks him out or something, Connor's the king, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know, the person that gets hurt the most out of Poirier uh, McGregor too is is Ferguson. Yep. Because Ferguson but, was the one lined up to fight Poirier. They were the ones yeah, but I think I think yeah, but I think Ferguson. I mean, he now he's talking about one seventy. I don't know, man. I don't know. Or I think anything. his last his last fight was interesting. I mean, I just think I just yeah, to me, I think Khabib fight. wants this Gaethje fight. If he gets past Gaethje, I don't know, man. I feel like somehow he might try to pull some strings and tell Dana he want he wants that Ferguson fight because that's the fight that everybody's been wanting for years. Nah, Ferguson doesn't. I think if he wants to solidify the greatest of all time, G he's GSP. To GSP. GSP. Yeah. I think yep. he wants GSP, and I think if GSP doesn't happen, I, I can see Khabib retiring. That fight has to happen at 70. Yeah, Khabib, yeah. GSP wasn't making 55 when he was younger. He's not making it now that he's older. There's no way. Um, and Khabib, but here's the thing. Khabib's a big 55 or two. So I'm yeah. sure he'll he'll be really happy not having to cut that extra weight. I could see him going to 170, but I could see GSP going down to 55 because he, like I said, 180, well, no, I didn't say four, but 185 was his walking weight. So when he fought against Bisping, he didn't even cut weight. Now, nah, listen, Mike, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. He's heavy. I'm going to tell you this, Mike. I'm going to well, give you a little insight. Like an animal. What what a fighter says and what a fighter really is are two very different yeah. things. No, I, I agree. GSP 100%. could say he's walking around at eighty five, and I would say at minimum, I would say minimum, he's at ninety five right now. Minimum, and that's me being generous. Not, I agree. But I think saying, if there was anybody that yeah. would do it, I think, I think he's, he's crazy said. enough to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What if he fight at one sixty five? Look, look, listen. What Santella? What do you think he is? I, I think he's over two hundred. There you go. I was being see. I was being nice. I was being. I was being uh, cautious about it. I said ninety five being nice. I agree. I would. I would put him in the two hundred range. Dude, Tristar has been closed. Where's he been training? You know. Yeah. I was yeah. just talking to Zach McCoskey. They just opened back up. Uh, it's still crazy out in in uh in Canada with the COVID. They're still on lockdown. Yeah, especially <laughs> so if you don't have if you don't have. Put him into the country. He had to fly from Canada. They wouldn't let him leave the airport. He had to hop on the friggin' flight and go to JFK and then go home to PA. So I know that he hasn't been training like with TriStar as much as if, you know, so there's no way he's, you know, staying in shape and, and walking at a low weight. None of those guys are. Nobody, yeah. I mean, look, I, I like I said, nine, if I'm saying 95, that's me being really, really nice to, I agree, I would say he's over 200 pounds. And then you're going to tell him to make 55? No shot. I don't want to be the Debbie Downer, but I don't think that fight happens anyway. I really don't. I don't think. I think. Yeah, I don't know if it does either, but I think. I don't that think Dana wants it to happen. Fight, Khabib's all about being the greatest of all time. Nobody cares if he fights Ferguson. Yeah, you know? Ferguson, especially like, after his last Ferguson's performance. On the, down, on the downward spiral right now. So if you need to beat somebody and you want to be ranked the number one fighter of all time, that's why everybody's going after John Jones. You have to beat GSP. Yeah. I just don't think Dana wants to deal with GSP after the Bisping thing because he promised he would stick around for a couple of fights and then he immediately retired again. Yeah, I don't think that fight happens either. I don't, but, I, don't, I don't think – I know GS – like, I think GSP did an interview. I think he said, like, the fight does does excite him, but it also scares him as well. So, I don't I don't think – I don't think he's coming out. I think he's done. I don't think GSP has nothing to lose, man. I think uh, – I think, you know, he's coming out of retirement. He fought Michael Bisping his last fight. I think – I think him coming out – if he comes out and somehow beats Khabib, 
then you then you can't even argue who's the greatest of all I don't time. think his stock. I don't think his stock would fall even if he loses because people are already thinking. That's that what I'm saying. Him. Yes, Khabib He's should beat him. I, I older. Yeah, I saw the odds already. The odds are like three to one in Khabib's favor. I saw that they released if they were to fight. So I don't think I don't think GSP has anything to lose. I think he has more to gain. Yeah. All right, real quick before uh, we lose Brandon, uh, let's hop into a little bit of these uh, fights from this last week. Uh, one I really wanted to get his opinion on. Actually, I really want to get you and uh, I want to get Sergio and Shorty's opinion on this too. Uh, Bellator ran their uh, 248 card MVP versus Houston. Um, we can talk about any of the other fights if you want, but the big one I really want to talk about is the MVP fight. Um, I think both sides got exposed right there. I think, A, the first round, MVP looked like he could actually be beat. Um, he looked like he clearly could be beat. Um, but I don't think Houston had what it took on the ground uh, as far as an all-round game, game to actually make a difference. But then, B, MVP showed, like we keep talking about every week, uh, we talked about with GDR, uh, Brandon, Sergio, both you guys keep talking about these guys don't just train kickboxing. They train MMA. And they can do more than just punch you or kick you. And MVP showed that he had a little bit of ground defense, had a little bit of wrestling. He definitely had some takedown defense, um, which I'm assuming is something he developed when his whole beef with uh, Paul Daly was coming around. Um, but, uh, Brandon, what do you think about that fight? Hey, man, was another fight for MVP. I mean, he went out there, did what he was supposed to do, you know, got the W. I mean, I I think it's one of those things where, like, dude, if you want to get into a title contention, you need to beat somebody instead of somebody who's fresh off a, off a of cage warriors, you know, another, like, prospect who's, like, 8-0. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, he went out, did what he was supposed to do. He got the W. You know, like, yes, he did he did show some ground game, you know, but he – but, again, he did what he's supposed to do. But it's like, man, you need to, you need to find another top-ranked uh, welterweight in Bellator if you, if you, if you want to get a shot at Lima again. You know, you can't, can't just beat, shot beat, beat these guys and then, and, then, and, then, I, and then say, give me a title shot. I, I, I couldn't agree more, man. I just, it's funny he brought that up because this is what I pulled up. So, mm -hmm. so after getting knocked out by uh, Lima, right? So he was obviously, uh, I think, 15 and 0 when he fought Lima. So after fighting Lima and losing by knockout, his next opponent was Richard Keeley, Giovanni Maggio, Shicho Ansai, and now Ross Houston. Now, out of the three of us here, uh, right? Other than me, who knows any of those guys? Never I never heard of any of them. I knew Ross I, Houston only because of the height. I, I actually bought into the listen, height training. I, and I looked him up. I get all right. Other than that, I guarantee you there are tougher fights for him on the local, regional, northeast scene than those four guys he just fought. I guarantee you, you put him at Ring of Combat, CFFC, one of these promotions, he'd have a harder time than those four guys, which is yeah. goes back to what Brandon just said. How can he ask for a title rematch against Douglas Lima, who I've been saying for a long time? Yes, I'm biased. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for you know a long time. But I think he can beat Usman right now. I, I think Douglas Lima can go to the UFC right now and probably win the UFC title, if not contend at welterweight. With that being said, you can't give. I, I don't know what Bellator is doing. They're giving MVP these guys that no one knows that are. They don't. They don't want him to lose. They, they, like he's in his all right, but then, all right, title but, contender. Right, but, I feel like he has to speak up. But he, at some point, they have to get. I feel like he has to speak up for the title. Go ahead, Shorty. Go ahead. I, I feel like he has to because, in his mind, he knows that they're they're giving him easy fights. So to counter what they're doing for him, he needs to speak up. If he doesn't speak up, then he's yeah. kind of like, you know, hanging his head, saying, "All right, yeah, I'm taking these give me fights." You know, he still has to build up his brand, and even though that he's getting these give me fights, he still has to speak about the title. If not. You know, then then he kind of loses that relevance of who he is. Yeah, I, I think in his 30s, I think there's probably not too many title shots in his future, but I think they keep him as a marketable star, especially in Europe. So they kind of give him these fighters that might be a tougher challenge, but he can definitely beat. I, I don't I don't really see him getting Lima again. But I mean, there's there's other fights that they can put him in. I mean, you can fight a guy like Rory McDonald. Maybe Daly's, maybe Daly's he's, going he's in PFL now. He left. <laughs> no, but I think PFL, all their PFL, guys, all their guys, all their guys got released. Soon. Yeah, all, all their guys got released. Because they, they didn't get released. They're, they're fighting with them, actually, because my good friend is actually uh, Lance Palmer's attorney, one of my clients. And there's a dispute going on where they, they didn't honor the contract by having them fight twice this year, but they also don't want to release them. 
Oh, yeah, I thought they. I, so that's the problem. That's why he sued them. They they wouldn't let him out of the contract. Wow. So I I because again, also a good friend of mine, training partner Chris Wade, who was in the UFC, he was with them. I was. He, I thought he was really. He he he's thinking he's released. So this is news to me. It, it uh, might be different because he. Lance was their champion, and their contracts are probably different. Yeah. But Lance was guaranteed two more. Oh. Shorty, you got muted again. And, uh, there you, you go. know, from talking with uh, with my client and, like, you know, the stuff on the internet is, you know, they're trying to prevent him from fighting. You know, like, I'm sure he could go and negotiate other places. Oh, 100%. But I Palmer will be fighting contract. tomorrow. All right, uh, Brandon, what else did you want to talk about on that card real quick? Because I know you got to take off. Uh, I mean, it wasn't – well, it wasn't really on that card. It was on the uh, – the, the Paris card with Chuck Congo? Yep, the Chuck Congo card. Yeah, it was just uh, my man who got the flying knee knockout, my man Eves uh, Landu. Bro, like, I, I tell Terry people Brazil. all the time, I've never seen anyone – get up from a flying knee kick like i remember i remember telling people when i have kids one day i'm just gonna teach them flying knee kicks so that way they're at school and the bully bothers them just to give them a flying knee kick because i've never seen anybody get up from a flying knee kick i've yet to see anybody give up from one and bro his celebration was bananas he might he might he might be a better break dancer than uh than uh tony ferguson hey watch what you're wa hey watch what you're saying because you're speaking I'll to santella as a, as a break dancer here bro don't sleep on him i'll battle ferguson uh, he, he's dancing. better than Ferguson, honestly, on the ground. Yeah, not by jujitsu, by breakdancing, of course. Well, Brandon, I know you wanted to uh, talk about cyborg, but I guess we'll have to uh, hear your thoughts after the fight next week because I know you got to take off. Yeah, um, unless you got a few more minutes, but we got. Yeah, I, 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 I got some time. Part. I got some time. Okay, cool. I got uh, ten minutes. Only other fight I really want to talk to on uh, Bellator, and I really don't want to talk about it because I don't think it was that much special but the other main event uh chuck congo and tim johnson ran it back tim johnson eked out a split decision i think check at this point he's just more of a name fight he ain't, he's not going to contend for anything in my opinion but i don't know shorty what do you think Six fight for a paycheck yeah pretty much uh -huh. anybody disagree no, I mean, I think I, I agree, but Tim, but on the other side of the token, Tim D. Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, he's on a three or four fight win streak. And he's and always he, been super tough. I mean, and, and he case. beat, he just beat, uh, what's his name, Matt Mitrione before he beat Chad Congo. So, I mean, he's on a three or four fight win streak now at Bellator with wins over Matt Mitrione and Chad Congo. Eight so, guys, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, guess, I guess he might might get a title shot next. You know? Him and Bader. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, they're be lining up for Doom and uh, Emilienko next. So, they're yeah. going to take each other out. I mean, I was gonna say to me, like, I, I mean, one, I'm happy. Check Congo, he got he, he he got the fight in France. You know, he got the you know be 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 in front of his peoples. But to me, it's like, yo, the Bellator heavyweight division is light. Like, yeah, Check Congo lost, but I mean, he could have another fight, and then boom, he's right he's right there back. I'm actually back surprised in, that fight uh, took place because I'm surprised that fight took place with all the travel restrictions. A lot of Americans aren't really allowed over in the Europe right now. I think the travel restrictions, uh, certain countries in Europe, I believe. So yeah. France is a little more open. Yeah, because 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 uh, they had a crowd too in France. Yeah, I saw that. I saw when well, we mentioned the card was the same night. I went back and watched the highlights. Yeah, um, there was a big, uh, not a big, but a pretty explosive UFC card this weekend. Um, Want to point out how wrong how wrong Sergio was about Corey Sanhagen. <laughs> oh man, listen. <laughs> uh, to update Corey Sanhagen with the. Uh, the highlight reel uh, spin kick knockout. Early um, stoppage. It, it wasn't early stoppage, but it, I mean, at the same time, Marlon was clearly, he protested a little bit, but he didn't really protest it that much. And when a fighter doesn't protest it, I kind of think it was probably a good stoppage. But Sergio, I'll let you go ahead and start on that one. I mean, look, the, uh, what am I going to say? He won by TKO. I thought, uh, again, I'm not to make excuses. I thought it was an early stoppage. I thought the fight went how I believed it was going to go with the exception. I thought Marlon was going to eventually catch him on the feet. I think Marlon was trying to, you know, be able to close the distance a little more. I think Cody did a nice job maintaining the distance, which is hard. I didn't realize how much bigger Cody was than Marlon. I know how small Marlon is, but when they stood next to each other, man, that 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 distance was gigantic. I was looking forward to the fight. I thought it was a good matchup. I just think it's the height. Yeah, I, I didn't realize it was that much, though. Um, 
with that being said, I think Marlon was just, t- you know, was trying to figure out that this Marlon's an elite level striker. Uh, not not to take away from Sanhagen, I think he's a great striker, but I think Marlon's a way better striker. I think that he just had to figure out the the distancing a little bit longer. I think that was going to eventually happen. I think he was going to catch him, but uh, props to Sanhagen for beating him. And um, I mean, yeah, he just caught him. He he didn't really like you know dominate him or anything. He just happened to catch him. But I think it, it kind of grazed his head. I, I don't think he was out, bro. I think it just kind of like dazed him a little I bit. Think he caught him back. in the temple, though. I think it definitely. Yeah, I think his I think his Achilles, like his heel, clipped him and went up. But I just feel at that level, I was actually just talking to Frankie this morning about it. I just feel like at that level, you got to let these guys take a little extra damage, you know, where. It's not stiff. If he was stiff. That's what I'm saying. He wasn't out. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let the guy get on top and let him pound. Like, look at the Cejudo fight. They let that go. Look at how many times Frankie has come back after getting dropped and rolled and tumbled. Yeah, that, 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 level, that It's not an entry-level fight. For those it's listening not, and not watching, he's talking about Frankie Edgar. It's a main event. You know, like, let, let him go out on his shield a little bit so that way there's no argument. Yeah. I think, I think it depends on the ref. Like, yeah, I think the more experienced the ref, the more they try to let, let him like go. Brandon, what do you think about that fight? Uh, I think there's I'm, more short stoppages now than there ever been. Obviously, I I, I agree. I don't know if it's yeah. because of COVID or what, but it unless Herb, le, unless Herb Dean is your, your ref, but go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought I thought it was a good fight. Like I said, I was with you guys last week and saying we we all were picking um uh, Marlon to win it. You know, like I said, I thought it was a it was a good fight going in. Like I said, I didn't think really San Hagen was doing doing that much. You know, he was you know switching his stance. That's what he that's what he kind of does. But I really kind of thought you know Marlon you know, he had the power you know to, to stop him. And then again, it's like, it's like we talked about you know just in the second round happened, he caught him with the kick. You know, like I said, it clipped him. You know, got a little daze. Uh, San Hagen came in, bounced. You know, try he tried tried to hop in and finish. Ref stepped in. You know? Listen. I don't want I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist because I'm not one person to say that to you know talk about this stuff, but I, I I've been around the sport for a long time. I've cornered a lot of guys at high level fights, and I do really believe that there's something to be said about the promotion wanting certain guys to win certain fights. I think I really do believe. Again, I don't know if this is true. This is just me, you know, what I think. I really do think like Dana White comes goes in the back or or, or Coker goes in the back. I, th- I really think they tell the refs, look, if there's any signs of this guy being stopped, if you get any, stop it earlier than it is. Oh, just, this guy's on some 1997 listen, you see, you I do listen, I do believe that, we man. I do. talked about the wrestling before the show. Now he's listen, like, listen, the in, listen, the in, the in, in, inconsistency between stoppages and fights for certain guys, I think that you can see the difference. I You saw Peter Yan with Jose Aldo. They let Jose Aldo almost die out there. He was getting fucking 80 shots to his head. Um, Dominic Cruz and Henry Cejudo. I thought that was a little bit of an early stoppage. And and this one right now with Marlon and Sanhagen. I think if the roles were reversed and I think if Sanhagen was get, took that spinning kick from Marlon and Marlon was was and he was still looking into him and, and from back, I think the ref would have let that go a little longer I really do but I think that they, because they wanted San Hagen to win that fight I really think that they stopped it early you know what I believe too because there's no crowd when you have that small people go like oh my god that plays into the the refs yeah. uh, 100%, you know, 100%. Too. Yeah. 100% you know um, real quick, one other fight I want to hit on before Brandon takes off. Uh, we all kind of were hoping it was based on the fact that he went through a murderer's row. That's why Barboza had all those losses. But, man, he looked like the, the top guy that he actually is against Amir Khani this week. I mean, he, he just dominated Amir Khani. I don't even know the person that gave Amir Khani a round, but, like, that was a, a domination, Brandon. Hey, man, Barboza, striking clinic. Man, I was like, dude, like he has probably the fastest switch round one kick in in MMA. I mean, the dude, the dude's just good. And possibly, man, kudos to him for man at his age to drop down to 145. Usually people go up, but he dropped down. Still looks good. Still looks in phenomenal shape. You know, came went in there, man, and just went and did his thing. He didn't look tired at all. To me, I thought, I, I thought, I thought he won the whole fight. But like I said, I'm not a judge. That, that scoring was all over the place. You had 29, 28, 30, 27, and 30, 26. Sergio. Yeah, I think 30, 27 was the correct score. I think it was. It, it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't any rounds where I, I, I thought it was a 10-8 round. I thought 
10-9 every round. I think pretty pretty clearly. I think he's the better fighter. I'm I'm also in, agree with uh, Brandon. I think him making 45, he looks really good. And look, like we've spoken about it before, two split decision losses, one to Paul Felder, which, you know, I thought he won, and also one to uh, Dan Ige, where I also thought he won. He could be yeah, on a three-fight. He fought a bunch of, like, top Yeah, guys he could be on a three-fight win streak right now, you know, so. Sean? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think he looks great at 45. Um, Edson's always carried like a lot of water and it's always been easy for him. Like he's, he's sitting in puddles during training camp, you know? So like he, he sweats. Um, I think that, I just think that there's not too many pressure fighters at 45, like 55. That's where I thought he had his problem. And I think that's his kryptonite. I think that his power, and his speed carries over better at 45 when he's dealing with pressure. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I think he's going to do well. I also agree. I think he won the last two fights, the last two uh, split decision losses. I thought he won. And um, I think from the judging, I think the one was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where the guy got the takedown, and even though he didn't do anything, I think that they're, the judge is, uh, is kind of they're favoring the takedown at the end of a round as completely wiping out like what happened early on in the, that round, unfortunately. I disagree a little bit on the Felder fight. I thought, I mean, that was a pick 'em. Like, I think that fight was so back and forth. I thought the Felder, I thought Felder did win that fight, but he definitely, I thought, I thought he beat um, each, but yeah. as, as always, don't leave it in the hands of judges. Right. Um, yes. The big thing, the big thing that came out of that card, obviously possibly knockout of the year, at least as far as the media is concerned, um, Watching the fight back, I mean, it was definitely super impressive. I've seen some awesome knockouts this year, so uh, I'll put it in context. But I will say uh, Buckley, with that knockout, um, they were all on the hype train for his opponent. They were all, you know, he was, what, 8-0 going into that fight. Um, I, I was. I was one of them. I was very impressed Impa, with his last performance. Yeah, Impa was like 8-0 or something like that going into that fight, and everybody was forgetting about joking. Uh, Buckley. So that fight, that that knockout. I mean, I might even throw the clip in here if I don't get sued by the UFC on the video version of this. Um, man, that's one of those things you kind of you think about doing when somebody catches your leg, and he he did it. <laughs> Brandon. Hey man, it was a good knockout. I probably would say as of right now that probably is knockout of the of the year in uh, in uh, MMA. Uh, I mean, but but even though before the knockout, man, that fight was bananas right off the bat man like those dudes were going at it they were swinging you know buckley was going forward he, he was pressuring him the entire time swinging away so i mean it was good action right off the bat and then that knockout just oh wait i always feel bad man like 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 the people who get knocked out of those like it highlights like they're always so but much good humble guys like that dude that got did that, you see that, the behind the scenes with dana coming up to him talking about the 200 scenes he was like almost crying yeah yeah what was that shorty you broke up? If you're on the end of a, a like a knockout of the year, you should get paid for being the bad beat. You know, yeah. like you, yeah. like he should get paid something for being on that end. You know, to like kind yeah. of ease it up a little bit. You know? yeah. But yeah, but I, mean, I was thinking, you like, get caught like, like that. Like, I think like that guy, like that guy that got knocked out. He was so humble because he even, he even like even before the fight. I think Buckley, Buckley had posted out on Instagram saying like, "Oh, see you, you know, see you soon." And the guy, and the guy replied back saying like, "Oh, I hope you and your team have safe travels getting here." And then even after the fight, he even, he even, he even said to Buckley like, "Oh, I hope, I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you guys, uh, you know, you know, you know, have safe travels going back." Like. I, I mean, saw an interview just, with him. He's just super a humble, humble guy. Like that dude is a true martial artist, right there. And it just yeah. always, it always is sad, man. When when, when it's those guys are the ones who who are who are on the uh, highlight reel. Yeah. No matter what else happens in his career, now people are just going to remember this one fight. Yeah. Sergio. Listen, man. You guys said knockout of the year. I, I'm going to go as far as saying knockout of the history. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know if I've ever. I don't want to live in the moment. I got I got to look at it. Another the un, another the only other one that stands out to me that's probably could maybe top that one was Edson Barbosa who we just spoke about versus uh Ethan Terry Ethan when he did Holly that Holly home bro kick. Holly home on Ronda Rousey come on yeah nah, Holly home you ride nah, home with a spin kick and nah but that that Barbo that Barbosa one where uh, Terry <laughs> Edson, felt, the way he, uh, fell, he, was he felt like a tree bro he felt like a tree 
Yeah. That would be the other only other one that I would put ahead of that if I had to pick one. But I just like looking at it later. I don't like living in the moment because in the moment all of us are on super hype and we're like, wait, wait, wait. I'll look at it in a couple months and like see how I still feel about it. But it was definitely highlight real worthy and something to get everybody buzzing about that car. But when I, don't I think it, go ahead. When I did the breakdown of this fight on my other podcast, one of the things that I said about Impa and Saganai, the guy who got knocked out from Buckley, was I, how impressed I was with his poise and how patient he is. And I think that cost him the fight, actually. What I, his, that was, what his, what his, uh, what I, what stood out to me about him was he, how he was always go, able to go from zero to 100 so quick. And I think he wasn't, he clearly was very patient to a, to a fault, you know, like that fight was fireworks, man. Buckley was throwing everything to, to rip his head off. And I think he needed to be a little bit more, more cautious. And he kind of, you know, didn't respect the power, I think. And that's why he got caught. Yeah. And I think, uh, just to touch on another fight real quick, uh, I think he pluses. That's how I think that's how you say it. I think he might be, uh, on his way to, to the next, like, to stay really? on that main card. Really, man? I, I wasn't impressed with him. I thought he was losing the fight, and I think that uh, Perez made a mistake trying to throw that spinning elbow and got caught. Exactly. I, think, I, was I, think, thinking, I was thinking the same thing, man. I, I was I was thinking, like, oh, he was going for a spinning elbow. Yeah. He just got caught. Yeah, I think Perez was winning that fight. He was backing him down. He was having him moving backwards, and then he tried to do that shit. You know, it reminded me of Weidman. Weidman with, uh, was it Rock, Rockwell, maybe, when he tried to yeah, do Yeah, he did the spinning uh, hook. Spinning, yeah, he was also winning that fight, and then boom, got caught. I think it's also about capitalizing on moments too the opening was there and he he jumped in on him and he got caught I mean, and True. that's you know it's all about you know fight any fight can change on a moment's notice all three of you know that yeah um anything else you guys want to talk about that card uh before we jump into breaking down with uh our good friend shorty rock for a little bit there's a bunch uh, of stoppages two fights one giga jikazi told you former, former glory kickboxer Dude is good, man. Dude is good. He's sneaky. He, really good. He, he trains at he he train he train he trains at King's MMA. I mean, dude. I mean, he he has his Giga kick as they like to call it. Uh, but I mean, his takedown defense is looking sharp. You know, like saying his striking is definitely all, all, always all, always on another level with, with everybody that he usually fights. And then uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Tracy Cortez, who in the middle of the fight found out that she was going up against a uh, jujitsu black belt. Was still taking. It was down proud of herself like because that. she was handling her own. That yeah. girl looked terrible on the ground, though. I think yeah. she's a judo black belt. I don't know. Is she yeah, jujitsu black belt? I, 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 they say she's jujitsu black belt. Yo, right? yo, Sean just took the words out of my mouth. It hurts my heart when I hear those words. It can't be a jujitsu black belt. With what I, saw. I mean, no offense, man. I, I, I never sure tried. Pretty sure it's a judo black belt. I, I hope, I hope. Unless somebody else gave her a jujitsu black belt, but yeah. she didn't look, she didn't you look know, very good. Never really know. Um, Brandon, when you talk about Serge, there, there, are, levels. You, there are jujitsu black belts and yeah. jujitsu black belts. Exactly, exactly. And I, I, I'm big on saying that. I always talk to people about that. And Sean, and I'm not saying this because he's on the show right now. He's one of the first guys that I've got to train with maybe he's 10. One of the best on the ground ever. 10, no, no, listen, this is coming from me. And, and Sean knows how many high level black belts I've trained with uh, from white belt all the way to black. And I've known Santella since probably 10, 12 years ago. We were training before there was even, and, I, and I'm telling you, he's, when I talk about high level, he's up there with high level guys. And um, to to see somebody like that girl, I, I really hope she doesn't have, it's it's kind of it's kind of offensive to the guys who really know what they're doing and the girls who really know what they're doing. Yeah, you know, like a like a Mackenzie Dern, for example. You know, you're gonna compare her and Mackenzie. Oh, Dern. That's that's a whole nother you know? level right there. Yeah, yeah, that's not even yeah. close. Like Mackenzie. That's what like I mean. Seventh down or something like that. No, 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 she's not. She's not that high because uh, as, after you get your black belt, it's more about uh, time versus like uh, merit. So I think she's it has pretty to be, high. It's, yeah, it, your first three degrees is three years, and then your fourth degree, I believe, is five years. Here. Yeah, your so there's no way. Just so just fourteen. Eight, I have just, to look it up. I have to see yeah, what level she is, but just just age wise. Here's the fun facts. Uh, Sarge subbed her out with a wrist lock. Sajara. Mm. Oh wow. Yep. With a wrist lock. Oh man. Wrist lock. that's like a slip a spit in someone's face, bro. Yeah. Fun <laughs> facts. All right, Brandon. Uh, I don't want to get you in trouble with the missus. I'm gonna let you get out of here. Um, definitely see you again next week. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and. Uh, Anything you want to add before you take off? 
No, nah, man, just, uh, hey, everybody, just listen. Remember, like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like about the show. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, B Catino TSMA. And I'll catch you guys next week, man. I love no, this stuff. Don't, don't forget uh, hashtag tune-up crew. <laughs> exactly. All right, man. You guys All have right, a good one. Catch you guys later. Take All right, Brian, take it easy. All right, so it's just three of us. Um, any other fights you guys want to talk about that before we move on? That card? Uh, uh, yeah. The heavyweights look oh, pretty good. Yeah, Dawkins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dawkins man. Dawkins looks phenomenal. I was surprised yeah. by that. Look Looking phenomenal. at it on paper, I was like, I don't know. Guy. Yeah, I thought, I thought Rodrigo had a good chance on winning that one. I know he was the underdog, but. A huge underdog, two and a half. Yeah. Made some coin on that one. Um, I, I actually was very impressed with Dawkins because the reason I actually thought he wasn't going to win. I, and I hate picking against regional guy, uh, like uh, from our region, Northeast. But I thought that Rodrigo was going to be a little too much. He reminds me, I've watched Rodrigo fight before. He reminded me of, uh, I know Santana knows him, Zoo, who was also yeah. used to fight Bellator local. Well, and I th- and well, that's Zoo, why I thought he was going to lose because I saw that him. fight against Zoo. Yeah. So I, I thought Zoo, you know, who beat So I, I felt stylistically Rodrigo was going to be a bigger, stronger guy. But Chris's hands are so fucking fast, bro, for a yeah. heavyweight. Holy yeah. shit. Thanks to our good friend Shorty really- Rock, I watched so many of those CFFC fights, and I, I saw Zoo. Like we had Zoo on a bunch of times for Art of MMA as well, mm-hmm. and I saw that fight against Dawkins, and he just destroyed him. And I was just like, and I knew, uh, I just knew Rodrigo fought so many tough fights, and especially with his jujitsu and, and grappling. I thought he would give Dawkins. Bits, but but Do- Dawkins is a, a black belt too, and I think he trains with some pretty legit guys. I mean, dude, his brother is phenomenal too. What yeah, yeah. Is, his brother fights at one eighty five, and having a guy like that, exactly, that's close to your size, somewhat, that's your level. Yeah, exactly. Bro, that's like night and day. I think that's why Jim and Dan got so good. You yeah. know, like he's always gonna be dealing with guys that are like a little quicker, that are just as technical. You know. Yeah. So I mean, his I'm brother's excited. Really good on the ground. Brother, they're they're both phenomenal. Yeah. Super think, nice guy too. I think overall that card was kind of a sleeper card. I think uh, there was a lot of uh, really exciting fights. A lot of fights you didn't really necessarily know how they were going to pan out because the names weren't big names. So I think if anybody has a chance, maybe on ESPN Plus, go back and rewatch that card because there was definitely some undercard fights that were worth the time. Uh, but I don't want to keep everybody all day, and I do want to get to our guest of honor. Uh, we're really happy to have uh, Shorty Rock joining us. If you guys aren't familiar, uh, go on DCXIV.com, look his name up. We've interviewed him for Art of MMA uh, three times, I think we agreed on. Yeah, I pulled up most of the, the interviews. First time we interviewed him was way back in uh, 2013. It was like actually right after we started the website, maybe like a month and a half after we started. Um, he was one of the first fighters to really um, go out of his way and take time for us. Um, and he's always been super approachable to, to get on when I hit him up about coming on the show he didn't even hesitate um, so definitely thank you for that uh, I know you've been busy you've been fighting in Brave you've been fighting in CFFC uh, and I thought it was funny your last fight was against the other shorty who was also another kick-ass and then you guys ended up having a draw ah uh, terrible what happened in that fight oh man um I, I thought the fight was going just as planned. I thought, you know, it was going to be a, a striker versus grappler. I dominated the first two rounds. And by the way, um, we're talking about uh, Jose Torres. Go ahead. Yeah. And um, I knew it was going to be tough, and I knew he was a slow starter, so the game plan was to come out hard right off the bat. And um, the way that the fight went with being entangled in a, in a leg entanglement and then taking his back pretty much for eight minutes straight, my legs were shot in the third round. So I was, I was on like, you know, wobbly legs that whole third round. So my game plan was just to kind of survive. And I thought I did that. I didn't think it was a 10-8. Unfortunately, two judges gave him a 10-8. One judge gave him a 10-9, which gave me the fight. Um, and then it was a majority draw. So it's, kind of, it's my fault. You know, I, I, I definitely could have been more active. But I definitely don't think that it should have been a 10-8. I think my first round of domination – where he didn't land one significant strike and he was in danger literally for, you know, four and a half minutes had more requirements that were met to give a 10, eight, but you know, that's his place. You know, he's one of their guys Plus, chance, no any chance they run it back? there. You know, the announcers are calling for a 10, eight halfway through the third round. You can hear that when it's empty, 
Yeah. You know, they're, 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 story too. You know? Didn't I just say that about like how the promoters, when they have specific guys, I didn't, I'm not saying this specific fight because if I'm being honest, I want to go back. Where can I watch this show? Where can I watch this fight? Because I want to. I'll send it to you. Somebody, Disney, yeah. uh, do it Facebook Live for, on their TV and they recorded it and sent it to me. I'll send it to you on Facebook uh, uh, Messenger. All right, send it to me because I want to be- go back and, re- and rewatch it. But if I, if I, like I said, if I know anything about Sean on the ground, I know it, it, if he's saying he dominated on the ground, he's dominated on the ground. I've seen him with, you know. I'm not exaggerating. When I say for, for at least eight and a half minutes, I had him in danger between a back body triangle or I had 4'11 and I was attacking a heel hook. The whole that whole first but that, round. That, that's what pisses me off, man. And I know I'm biased because I'm a – I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm, I'm, that that's what I'm saying though. I'm I'm biased towards grappling because obviously I'm a grappler. So yeah. it pisses me off when I watch guys dominate on the ground like that. Like like you know who looked really good on the ground? That kid Jimmy Flick. Um, yeah. He looked really good on contest. I mean, he was just dominating the guy on the ground. He went from transition center, and people don't appreciate that shit, man. The sport is too we the sport is too old at this time right now for people to still not understand what's going on on the ground. Yeah. Taking some, takes taking some as judges that actually yeah. know. Yeah, taking somebody's back for four and a half minutes is equivalent to knocking them down and striking on the feet to me. Right. I don't think that they understand. They that. They don't understand that. Person on the back cannot be in danger unless pretty much he crosses his ankles. Other than that, you can't. There is no danger with somebody that has your back. You completely dominated the position and you were attacking. Yeah. You know. So to me, it's like. It's crazy, but any chance they run that back? Yeah, we just got. We possibly have a new date because we're in a flyweight tournament. So yeah. So uh, what happens with that? So we got a rematch, and they're looking at December twelfth in Russia. Oh shit! What? Yeah. You, so where was this fight? Where did they? Where did they hold the? the this last fight, fight was in Bahrain. Okay. Yeah, that's where they do a lot of them, Bahrain. It was great. I mean, you know, it, it was out there. You got to remember, he's a commentator for Brave. So he's like the Paul Felder of Brave, you know? So a lot of guys for the Brave company came up to me like, dude, you won that fight. Dude, you won that fight. You know, you, you can watch it and, and speak your own opinion. I thought yeah, I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll watch I want to watch, watch it. But it's a good fight. Either way, I think the rematch, I don't think it changes, you know, because it was literally all grappling. So I do have some striking. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. I just feel like, you know... He's got a lot more to worry about than I do to correct. I go out there and just execute the same game plan or maybe land some strikes, and he's going to be thrown off. He doesn't want to go to the ground with me. He found that out. How, how was I, his wrestling? Uh, his wrestling was all right, but so he would stuff me, and then I would pull guard and throw him right into a submission pretty much. He landed zero strikes from inside the closed guard, zero. He backed out of my guard like three or four times, nice. you know? So. I mean- He's been pretty successful. He only has that one loss in the UFC. Other than that, he was undefeated. So, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, we always know, like I keep saying, you're the best kept secret in the kid. flyweight it's division. Yeah, we keep saying you're the best kept secret in the flyweight division because I can't believe over these years you haven't been in the UFC, um, especially being so much in this. You know, we have a great relationship. We have throughout the years, Rob Haydeck and all those guys over in Cage Fury Fighting Championships. And that's where we know you from most. That's still your home. Uh any plans to go back there and fight anytime soon? No, so I signed a long a long contract with Brave. Um, so you're locked in now? I'm locked in for a little while, and I'm, I'm actually truly happy with that because I feel like now I'm actually getting paid what I deserve. Yeah. You know? Um, I feel the way I'm treated there is, is better than I've ever been treated by a promotion. And in the end, you know, the UFC didn't want anything to do with me. I think that their matchmaker had an issue with me for some reason. I don't, I don't really understand why. But, you know, why do I want to be in a promotion that doesn't want me? I don't and know who wouldn't want a fighter who's 23 and 7. You know, the Brave promotion wants me. They promoted me. They treated me great. Yeah, you know, Brave's awesome. I got a bonus for my last fight. Uh, a, a lot. My bonus was more than my paydays in, in other organizations. Just my bonus. You know? They didn't have to do that, you know, because it was a draw. Yeah. And like I said, they're treating me better than I've ever been treated. I feel like I've deserved, I deserve this for years. So all the other promotions, it's, it's their loss and it's Braves gain in, in my opinion, you know? So I I'm glad that I decided to, to sign a long-term deal because they've agreed to keep me active 
I know that they're signing the best flyweights in the world. And I'm excited for that. And I'm getting paid to do what I love, you know? How are they How are they doing with the, because uh, I know they're still fly, flying people in and out. How are they doing with like the travel and are they like bubbling people up at all? Or are they just kind of letting you guys be responsible for yourselves? Um, as far as COVID? No, so, so travel, everything was good. They're doing COVID tested a lot. Um, I actually, the week before my fight, I was actually cornering Sarge. So I, in, in a matter of two weeks, I had seven COVID tested. So they're pretty much on par with the UFC with when you get um, you being quarantined and not leaving and then keeping an eye on you. So everything was good. The only thing that sucks is that their, they've, their promotion is worldwide. So there's a lot of restrictions, like I said earlier, with uh, Europe and the United States citizens coming into their country. So that's why we actually got pushed to either fighting again, either in Iran or Abu Dhabi or Russia, simply because we couldn't fight in other places. But they that's are putting shows on in other countries, but it's they got different uh, fighters from different countries other than the United States. It's actually what's hurting. I saw an interview with, uh, I saw Frankie's show, and Frankie was had uh, Eddie Alvarez on there, and they were talking, that's one of the things that's kept Eddie on the shelf because one doesn't want to run any shows outside of Asia and they're not letting him or DJ fly over there right now. Yeah, that's terrible. I don't understand why they won't let him come over if, if they're going to get tested prior to getting on the plane. And then when they get there, they're going to be quarantined and tested again. So as long as they don't come up positive, then if they come up positive when they're there, then they obviously got it from somebody there, not in the United States. Yeah. I think it's just an abundance of caution, especially with Americans testing. So so high right now all the hot spots that we got popping up yeah but i mean um, still like i got tested before i was able to board both ways i couldn't get on the plane to go there without being tested and then i couldn't come home without being tested so one thing i wanted to talk to you about now that i mean i guess it kind of changes now that i know you're locked up because you always kind of bounced around in different promotions too you know right before we talked to you last time you were about to have your champion versus champion fight in b3 um congratulations on that one you You've been nothing but successful in the flyweight division. A couple hiccups here and there, but over the last five years, I yep. mean, you've had what? One, two, three, like 10 wins, 10 wins, two losses, and a draw in just the last five years. You've been super active. Yep. You constantly keep going. And then you also had time because you also just opened your own gym, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to open up my own gym uh, this past March. And, uh, Blessing in disguise, I was cornering Claudia, one of my teammates, Claudia Ledesma, in, in Toronto. And I was supposed to sign my lease that week I came back. And that week I came back, they closed down all the gyms. So I didn't end up opening. I put a lot of money down for mats, but I never actually signed the lease. And I think it probably would have bankrupt me because I know a lot of places right now that are closing simply because of everything that happened. So yeah, I don't almost, even think sure, I'm going to off the that. ground. Go ahead, Sergio. Almost the same exact thing with me. L literally the same exact story, bro. Yeah, was, Sergio was I, talking a lot about that the, and the toughness. And we had a couple episodes ago we were talking about the toughness of training and between virtual and, and up close and personal. Yeah. Well, I never where, stopped training because, you know, where are you I was teaching training now? with Claudia and I was training with uh, Sarge for their fights when the fight from the UFC went to uh, Jacksonville. So we were training in, in uh, Claudia's basement. So I was pretty much getting pounded by two of the best women in the in the world at the time. So I was still staying active. Plus I signed my fight and my fight was in August. So I, you know, like I had to train not to mention, like, if I don't train, I, I go crazy. You know, you'll you find me. On your, are, you, are you training on your own? Are you doing the Miller brothers or, uh, uh no, no. So I, actually, I left, I left the Millers a little while ago when I decided I was going to open up my own gym. And I was training full time uh, at Pure MMA close by my house, and um, yeah, driven right. gym in Nick Catones. Yeah, Nick Catones. So, but Nick was closed down for a while. So, a couple of my friends had their own gym, and I was kind of doing my own drills until Sarge and Claudia's fight got rebooked. Then I was pretty much just training with them in the basement of uh, of Claudia's house. So I never stopped. But I'm always very self motivated. I don't need much. But if I stop training, I, I go through a depression, you know, so I needed to continue training. So I was still doing a lot of stuff on my own until everything opened back up. And then there, I actually found a group of people that were like me. They were battling a lot of inner demons. 
and they reached out to me about me training them. So we had our own little mini training sessions kind of to keep everybody on the straight and narrow. And um, we, we kept it together and we still train together, you know, to this day, which is awesome because they've been so thankful that they didn't go back to the things that they were doing that training saved them from. And during that COVID, everybody was like, you know, that, that hair away from, you know, the demons coming out and, and just to help other people during a pretty crappy time. Now you fight it, you fight at a lower weight. How, how is the, do you just constantly stay in shape and stay ready or how do you handle the weight cutting during COVID? I don't, I never have a weight cut. I walk around at 33. Okay. Don't get don't get me started with that man because that's motherfucker. Every time he yeah. posts he posts a picture of the scale, I'm like, bro, I can't even look at food and I've gained 18 pounds, bro. This mother, this he'll be like, oh, woke up 132.6. Wait till you wait till you get to my age. I, and I think some. I, I think honestly, just get 15. I, honestly, just just off of experience and being around guys for so many years, I think some people is just their, their body types, man. Cause I, I don't think to be honest with you, I don't think Sean is like on the straight and narrow, complete clear diet. I mean, he could tell us more than, more than anybody, but I've, I've had camps where I was literally eating like perfect. Like my meals were like perfect. When I mean perfect. And like, yeah, right. I was walking around a little lighter, but I still wasn't, you know, where I needed to be. Before we move on to some of the uh, upcoming fights, I do have one question to ask you. You were one of the, uh, you fought uh, Alamon Sterling a long time ago, five round war. You guys went back and forth. I guess like, I have to look it up. I think 2011. Yeah. Yep. Now yep. Getting, it's my last title fight at 35. And now he's getting ready to fight Peter Jan, most likely. You have a lot of insight on that. Well, how do you see Sterling from then to this? Like, first of all, how did that fight go? I know you unfortunately lost that fight, but what were your thoughts on that fight when you fought him? It was a good fight. I mean, um, you know, he, he's got good wrestling. He's got a, his length. You know, he defended my shots. He put me in some bad positions. I wasn't ever really in danger. I had him in a triangle where he elevated me and put me up against the cage. And then uh, he didn't slam me, which was surprising because I felt like I probably would have finished the triangle. Um, but just a super strong and athletic kid at that time. He, he didn't have much experience, you know? So I always knew he was definitely going to be like a star and he's definitely, he's done that. He's, he found a better camp. He found some of the best guys in the world and he's been growing. And uh, I don't count him out of any fight. Honestly, it doesn't matter who he's fighting. I think, think they come up with a great game. How do you see that fight going on? It's going to be, it's going to be a close fight. Yon's not going to walk through him. You know, Sterling will make it ugly every which way possible. I think it just depends on which which Sterling shows up. If Sterling tries to grapple him, I think he'll beat Jan. I think if if Jan, they stay on their feet, I don't think he beats Jan. I don't know. Sergio yeah, I don't. Wins. I think if he starts losing the stand up, then he's going to start mixing in his wrestling like he's done. I think when he's winning the stand up, he hasn't had to resort back to it. Like when he was fighting uh, Munoz and Rivera and stuff like that. You know, he was pretty much dominating the stand up against better strikers. <laughs> Sergio, what do you think? Yeah, man. All, I, like myself, I fought uh, Sterling as well. I fought him on his pro debut. And uh, what stood out to me the, the most, and also him and I had a, a grappling match uh, not too long ago. I think about it, two years ago, maybe. Um, so one thing that stands out for me from Sterling is what I try to tell people. You won um, the grappling match. It was a draw. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, I'll tell you this about Sterling that stands out with me uh, in comparison to a lot of guys that I grapple with. He does a lot of things that would be quote unquote wrong in grappling, which I would be like, there's no way that's going to work. But because of his body type, he's so lanky, bro. And his legs are so fucking long that he gets out of certain situations or he attacks certain positions where like myself and maybe Santa, we couldn't like his arms are so fucking long and he gets these chokes off a shot. So one of the things that I think is going to stand out to me the most in this fight with Jan, and I, I, I'm i going to go out on a limb, and I'm, I'm going to say Sterling is going to beat him, is that he does things that you don't expect and you wouldn't say is is right or – I wouldn't say is right. Yeah, I would you've, never been, you've been calling for Sterling to win that fight for a little bit. I think he will, man. I think he's very uh, unorthodox in the grappling aspect of it. He's very – funky and i think that's what you know he, he likes to say and he he gets certain position i've seen him you know submit guys from the bottom darts in the ufc you know what i'm saying like things that you normally like all right there's no way this is gonna work and you're like oh shit 
Uh, I and I think the odds. And I think Jan is going to be obviously. I think if it stays on the feet, but I don't see it staying on the feet. I no, think, I think I think Sterling's smarter than that. Can Jan yeah. can Jan keep the fight on the feet for five rounds? Is my question. That's going to be tough. For I think it's just a matter of Jan catches him quick because I don't think it's like. That, that's that's Jan go five rounds. I don't think it's that, going five. No, that's what I'm saying. And, and can you and can you go five rounds after a guy? That's the most uh, draining thing in MMA for me. If I had to tell, I always tell these guys uh, in training is going from the feet to the ground to the ground to the feet, fighting on yeah. the cage. That'll zap your cardio. Even if he doesn't get Jan in the first, in the second, the third. Imagine in the fourth round you're getting taken down, then you come up to your feet. And I think that's what Khabib does really well. He yeah. he, he kind of allows guys to think that they're going to get up. And use all that energy. And when they're like 50% up, he'll break them back down. And that's mm -hmm. mentally draining, man. And I think that's what's going to happen to Jan. I think that Sterling is going to, you know, keep getting, you know, he, not allowing him to, but giving him a little bit of breathing room on the ground. And when he tries to get up, take him back down. And then we try. And then that kid on your back is really annoying, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think he's uh, pulled off some of the more slick submissions, especially the rear naked chokes in UFC history. Like he, he finds a way to get get your back. Yeah, that and he's got options from there too. He's he attacks that straight knee bar. Yeah, um, you know, like he's he's not just a, a one trick pony. So you got to prepare for more than just one thing. You can't just defend the choke from there. You know, he's got other options as well as hitting you and elbowing you from that position. And you know, I I think it's gonna be a great fight. Like with me, I'd have to see the odds, and and see where the odds are to determine. You know. Well, DraftKings, ever wants to sponsor us, know that I'll be playing the DraftKings that weekend. I've been kind of up and down. I've been like three and three for the last couple of cards. I went five and one a couple weeks ago, so there is a possibility. Um, let's uh, jump into some of the fights coming up. Uh, I know, unfortunately, Brandon did want to talk about this uh, Bellator card on Thursday. Cyborg's fighting. Uh, the other, uh, Patricky uh, uh, Pitbull's fighting. Um, are we realistically thinking that Arlene Benkow, Blenkow has any chance against Cyborg? Sergio? No. No, I mean, I, I'm picking Cyborg every day of the week. I and mean, even on that uh, that Amanda Nunes fight, actually, I wasn't surprised on that fight. Uh, Santella can tell you she used to train with us back in the day. Uh, and, and I'm telling you what, man, I've trained with a lot of females in the past. And that girl can hit pretty hard. So I knew she was going to have a little I, – I wouldn't say I'd pick Amanda to beat her when they fought, but I knew Amanda was going to give her a really tough fight. So uh, other than Amanda, I don't see any woman in the world beating Cyborg. Um, and I think that if she was to fight Amanda again, I think it'd be a lot closer. But I think I, it's sad that GDR never wanted to fight her because I think the GDR the, – the random me fight would have been pretty entertaining. It would have been entertaining, but I think, I, think, I think Cyborg doesn't lose to anyone other than Amanda. Right yeah. now, so I'm always gonna pick her. Shorty. Yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. with that. I think it'd be a fun fight, but I still think that um, I think Amanda wins the rematch, and I also think that Cyborg would would beat Jermaine. You know. I think it'd be more entertaining than if they had fought a couple years ago. I think Jermaine just keeps getting better, but. Yeah. It definitely. It definitely would be something I'd want to. I'd pay to see it though. Uh. Padricky, uh, Pitbull, Jaleel Willis, the uh, kind of like the co-main. Uh, Willis is kind of the kid on the rise. He's definitely a lot bigger and lankier than Pitbull. Uh, but I think I think this is kind of set up for Willis to keep rising against more of a name opponent. Uh, you guys see that going? Uh, what kind? Of, how you guys see that fight going? No, I think I think Patricky. I think that's like the same thing we said about Venom Page. I think the Bellator brings in these guys who like are not complete. Uh, cans, but like have a little bit of hype on a regional circuit, maybe not a big name, and then they have their star guys that they put. So it's a win-win for them, right? If the kid beats him, now he beat a big name, we can start building off the kid. If he loses to him, it gives Patricky a paycheck and it makes him look better, you know? They're looking to make a highlight. Yes, Patricky, you also have to remember when, when they bring somebody in that isn't well known, you know, maybe on their first uh, fight contract, they're not really getting paid too well. So they actually hope that they go and they dethrone the champ because now you're pay you're paying somebody minimal wage. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. fighting that fight, you know. And then now, all right, yeah, he re he renegotiates and gets more money, but that you know, your your second or your third fight in, you win a title. You know, you're still only on your second your second contract. You know, that's why I think that they boost some of these guys up and hoping 
that, um, you know, they, they have one of those upsets where it yeah. saves them. They have a new guy to build up. You know, it's a win-win all the way around for the promotion. And plus, you get you get this, like, the DJ uh, thing where he's wiping out a whole division. Eventually, people get bored of that division. You know, yeah. so you come and you get somebody that comes in and and they, they throw that, that haymaker and they win. It's like, oh, wow. Now they got we a new star to push. Division. Yeah, new star to push. Um, mm-hmm. One other fight I want to talk about on that card, and we'll hop on the UFC real quick before we get out of here. Uh, Sergio knows this fight well. Leandro Higo, uh, Ricky Bendeas. Uh, that fight, I think, can go either way. I know Sergio was talking about a little bit before. He wouldn't be surprised to see somewhat of an upset. But, uh, Shorty, how do you see that fight going? So, another fun fact. I actually got offered that fight for that Connecticut card that got shut down. For this at one? 35 on a week's notice when uh, he was actually supposed to fight Derek uh, – or not Derek, um, Mariota. Okay. That's who he was originally supposed to fight, I believe. And then the other guy missed weight really bad, right? Yeah. yeah. So they that. asked me if I would take that fight. And uh, the pay was terrible for, for taking it on a week's notice. Uh, and you've never you've never fought in Bellator, right? No. No, I never fought. But it was just like, you want me to fight this dude for for money, at, like CFFC money? He, yeah. He, he goes a killer too, man. He comes yeah. from that, that pit bull listen, camp. I like the fight yeah. if I had a full camp. But pay me if I'm taking it on short notice and bumping up a weight, you know? Are you supposed to fight Bendejas or Higo? No, Higo. He, he trains with Bendejas. Santella yeah. trains yeah. with Bendejas. Yeah, I trained with yeah, Ricky for a while. Yeah. So I, I think, man, the last fight, Ricky just didn't look himself. He didn't look comfortable against Sergio. If he goes out there with that that fight, he he's going to lose and he's going to lose back. If Ricky could fight the way he can normally fight, it'll be a fun fight. Um, But... I think I, I would love to see Ricky win. It's just a bad fight for him, I believe. I think it's going to be entertaining. I think we were talking a little bit about this with Moraes and Sanhagen last week. Uh, sometimes matchups, they, you don't know why they got put together, but I'm actually looking forward to this fight a little bit. I think it's going to be a fun fight to watch. I think Higo probably has a little bit of advantage, but I've seen Bendejas pull out some highlight stuff. and I'd be He's got a huge him. advantage on the ground. If Higo takes him down, he's going to finish the fight. Yeah, I'd be exci- I'm excited to watch the fight. Sergio, what do you want to add to that fight? I know both guys well. Um, I know Eagle for a while. Uh, he comes from the Pitbull camp. He's a really tough guy. Uh, for a long time, I thought he was going to be a champion in that division. Um, and I know Bandeja just from the regional you know, circuit. I know he's, a lot of guys he's trained with. He's fought for CFFC a whole bunch of times. Yeah, we've got same Ricky card. Of MMA before, too. Listen, I think it's a really tough fight for Ricky. I really do. And I want – I'm rooting for Ricky. I want him to pull it off. But uh, it's a very, very tough fight. Um, Ego is I think very, if, if, if Ricky keeps it standing into the later rounds, he's got a better advantage. Yes, but Ego is very good striker too, man. Don't mm-hmm. underestimate him. I think that the, the, the distance maybe, if, if Ricky can keep it there, I feel like, like since moving down to Florida, I think Ricky has kind of veered a little bit away from his old – Old cat, I think old style of fighting. I think he was more like a lot of body clinching, taking Where's a lot of backs. Now? Uh, Florida ATT. ATT. Oh, okay, so he's down in Miami, yeah. Which I yeah. thought it was, which okay. I thought was a little, a little weird. I mean, I, ne- I never criticized guys for leaving camps, I've moved from teams before, but I just feel like he had he was doing well in New Jersey. I don't know, maybe it was personal reasons or whatever. He the I re- think it's happy wife, happy life, nicer weather, yeah. Well, he's been trying something new, kind of kickstart. Yeah, but I think yeah. that I think he's been uh, he's been actually losing since moving down there. I don't think he's won down there, right? Mm, I think he won that fight where he kicked the dude in the face. Not, not, not the Irish dude. The other dude where it was a short notice. The black dude where he I think in Ireland. Okay, yeah, yeah, Africa, yeah. But it was one of those that guys was his that were like. Fight with that. But it was yeah. a short, short fight, short notice fight. And it was against a guy Stotts no one knows. Him. That right hand maybe was it, was did he fight Stotts or or. Fight somebody. I forget who it was. But, I, no, I think it's good. You know, the thing is, Ricky's loaded with potential. And, you know, the problem was he he got by on pure talent. And, uh, 
you know, yeah. I, I just felt like he could he could be so much better if he put more into it. He was a guy I, that kind of just did enough. I've heard I've heard that so many times. I've spoken to him before. I think w- it was a card that him and I were on, and he came by and we were talking, and he was just like, "Yeah, man, you know, with work." And I think he had just had a kid at the time. He's like, "I didn't even show up to the gym for this fight." I don't know, yeah. like, what the? There was a know? lot of fights like that where he came minimum like. Like I, what I like to say is, there's some fighters in the UFC and in Bellator that train as if they were an amateur fighter, and they still do very well. That's Imagine crazy. Imagine if they actually trained like yeah. they were in it's UFC or Bellator. Talent. It would be insane. It'd be and insane. I, I, and I've heard that from from a lot of people uh, when they talk about Ricky. They're like, man, this kid, he could be so good, but he's not in the gym. You know, and a lot of guys in the gym two, three times a day, every day. You know, yeah. So, so, right, so let's, let's hit let's hit this UFC car real quick before uh, more of a Shorty Rock's neighbors start uh, peeping in his car from the back. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm checking out my skyline. I'm building a car. Uh, yeah, I was like, I saw the guy walking behind you, and I was. Yeah, like, he looked like he, he looked like he was about to mug you or some shit. <laughs> he was I just got inside. my car painted, so he he's checking it out. Um, and by the way, I'm glad we could occupy on that long drive. You just finally start, finally park. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how far the gym was from home, but. No, I didn't go home. I'm down at the shore the whole day. Oh, okay. Um, this fight, uh, I told Sergio a few weeks ago when we were looking forward to upcoming fights. I've been talking about this fight for a while. Uh, Korean Zombie versus Brian Ortega. I think it got pushed back once, but, um, man, this fight could go either way. I would love to see Zombie keep winning and go up the, the chain to get, you know, get more of his momentum that he lost when he stepped away for a couple years. Um but I just think Brian Ortega might be just way, just a little bit too tough, especially if that fight goes to the ground at all. Um, both you guys are grapplers. How do you guys see that fight going, Sergio? Uh, I like I like Ortega, man. I think he's really good. I think that fight with uh, Holloway didn't do him any justice. His stock fell a lot after that fight. But you were fighting a confident Max Holloway that was beating up everyone, and to me, should still be the champion. I think he beat Volkanovski. Uh, close fight, but I think he should be the champion. So I thought he won the last one too. Um, other than that fight, right? Ortega has looked great. So I mean, it's not 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 to knock uh, the Korean zombie who always shows up. I just think Ortega might be a little bit too much for him. I think he's a little bit of a better all around fighter. I think uh, the zombie is a great fighter. I just think that uh, Ortega is better. Are they doing that one five rounds, or is it going to be three like they did the? Uh, I think I think it's a five round main event. Five rounds. <clears throat> I I think that it just depends on. Ortega, if he keeps it standing, I think he's got a higher chance at losing. You know, it's he had a high, he had the advantage on the ground against Holloway, and he decided to make it a slugfest. Yes, it was entertaining, but you're that's where you lose the fight. So to me, it's about it's about smartness. You go out there and you get the you make it a grueling fight where you you try to get the fight to the ground. You use your striking to set up your takedowns. You win that fight easily. I think you know? it's going to be a bloodbath. I think it's going to go if back. If you keep it standing, I don't I see I see Korean Zombie winning. I have Korean Zombie winning. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. I think it's, I think Ortega's going to play into to Jung's style. I don't think he's going to take him down and try to do, use his wrestling and jiu-jitsu. I think I think it's going to be a bloodbath. I think Zombie's going to win. Yeah, me too. Sergio, who are you picking in that one? I'm picking Ortega, man. Not not to not to like step on fight caves picks and stuff, but you know nah, we, had to, go, we, I'm, I'm, we had to get one out of you. I got Ortega, man. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, other fights on that card. A lot of people, most people don't know. I know Thomas uh, Almeida's fighting uh, Jonathan Martinez in a featherweight bout. Um, Caitlin's fighting Jessica Andrade. Um, that that that's gonna be a fucking hell of a fight, man. Yeah, that's a one versus two uh, flyweight bout. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, Chuka game uh, fighting Andrade. That's going to be a nice fight. Um, are there any other fights you guys really want to talk about on that card that kind of draws your interest? I know on the undercard, there's also uh, – who did I see? Uh, you got the other Nermanado Ner- fighting uh, Striegel. You have uh, John Phillips versus Park. Uh, I love John Phillips. Like I say, he's one of those guys who's been good to Art of MMA in the past. Uh, but he has been – basically getting loot on the loser end almost every fight he's had with the UFC. I don't even know how he's still in the UFC, to be honest. Is he the one that just fought uh, Chemica? Yeah. Chima- yeah. Ah, man. Not too long ago, yeah. He got I think out. this is the fight where they released or no, him. Subbed. He got subbed. Yeah, I think this might be his last one, to be honest with you. He's on like a four-fight losing streak, isn't he? Yeah, he keeps he, – he, he's like – what's his name? Townsend we, were fight, we uh, talked about last week. He fights tough, but he keeps losing. 
And yeah. uh, UFC has cut people for less. They've cut people off wins. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about having Anthony Burchak on. Anthony Burchak was two and two in the UFC, and he got cut, including a knockout over Joe Soda. So Santella, anyway. Santella took a fight for the UFC short notice against Wilson Hayes. Stepped up, was going to fight him, and 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 he didn't even get to, and they didn't even give him a shot. So yeah, <laughs> terrible. And you know what? They just they don't really know right now. There is no rhyme or reason to what they do. You can have a lackluster performance win, and they're just you know maybe you're at the higher end of the payday, and they'll cut you. You know. Yeah, I mean, ever since, really they, no ever since they got bought, the they got bought now. It's more of a business than it was personal before. Yeah. So it's definitely 100%. about making those contracts work. Uh, any other fights you guys are looking forward to this weekend that we haven't talked about? I just like the Caitlin fight. I think it's an yeah. intriguing fight, and uh, you know, we the Caitlin had a teammate Claudia fight Jessica, so you know, it, it's uh, it's interesting to see the game plan. And it's going to be the first fight that Caitlin's ever fought without having Mark Henry there as well. Oh, so, he's, not going to, he's not going to be there? I didn't know that. No, it's his, it's his, uh, his wedding anniversary. So he's not out there. So Sajar is out there and Ryan Kafaro. I know that, yeah. I think yeah. Caitlin's fully capable of, of doing her thing. It's just whether or not she follows her game plan and fights the way that she fights. I personally think this is a, a perfect match for Caitlin because I think Andrade is going to come forward. And I think um, – you know, like how Rose was picking her apart is Caitlin's going to do that, but Caitlin's bigger. And I think Caitlin's striking is better than Rose's. So I think it's just, it's a match made in heaven for Caitlin's style. It's whether or not she sticks with her. And Jody's going through a murderer's row for that women's division though, fighting Zhang, fighting Rose and now fighting Caitlin. Yeah. She, she's had some tough matchups, but she's, she's held her own in the last, you know, against Rose. She went back and forth with Rose for a while. Um, yeah, obviously beating Rose with that huge slam, whether you want to question whether it was legal or not. But <laughs> yeah, I think that too is if you watch Rose is chipping her up the first couple of rounds and then her coach tells her to like sit on her punches. And that's when she started getting beat up more yeah. rather than do what she did the first couple of rounds. I think uh, it was Whitman. He's like, oh, settle in, settle down and sit on your punches. And it's like, dude, if you've been winning the first couple of rounds the way you've been fighting, continue fighting that way. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. You know, some of the way, like, who was it that we were talking about kept doing the head kicks? And I said, if we switched it up. But it's just one of those things. If it's working, you're working. You're winning a fight. You're getting paid to win. You know, yep. whether you win by knockout or you win by decision, if it's an easy decision, don't risk it. But if it's a knockout, I mean, you want that payday, too. So I know we were talking, you were talking about how much Bellator offered you to fight, you know, without talking numbers. Like, truth is, like, a lot of fighters don't have that comfort of, you know, sitting back, not fighting for a year. A lot of those fighters have to fight every so often so they can pay their camps, so they can pay their gyms. And so they, you know, a lot of them still work full-time jobs too. So, that fight, that pay wasn't even going to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it just wasn't, it was but, laughable. But gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, Shorty Rock, I'll let you get to the shore. Enjoy your day. Um, I appreciate you hopping on. You can hop on anytime you want with us. If you have a Tuesday available, please do. Love having you. Um, you know, you've always been a friend to not just Art of MMA, but man, mixed martial arts, everybody loves you. Um, always exciting fighter to watch. I've watched probably six, seven different fights of yours, especially when we were interviewing you and Eric Johnson, our lead interviewer for Art of MMA, kept reaching out to you and I'd, I'd, I'd follow up and I'd follow and watch the fights. And man, I was always impressed and always loved watching you. So thank you so much. Uh, good luck in that. I hope that Jose uh, rematch comes together soon. You guys can work that out. Um, definitely let us know when that fight's coming up. We'll promote it. We'll get everybody uh, trying to order that pay-per-view and watch the uh, the event over in Brave. We're always got friends over in Brave when they first started out. Um, I was telling uh, Sergio before the show, when they first started out, a uh, guy named Alex Soto. I've interviewed a couple times for a former UFC fighter. was one of their bookmakers. Um, Mohamed Saeed, uh, Shaheed, um, the Hawk, uh, mm -hmm. heavily involved over there. Um, yep the Saudi Prince, like we were involved with all that when they were first getting off, getting started, trying to spread the publicity, getting letting people know it was coming. So always been a big fan of the fact that Brave is kind of built up to what it is now. And so definitely looking forward now that we know you got locked in there and see some more fights with you over there. Uh, definitely, Sergio, man. I appreciate it. I'll definitely be, uh, definitely be interested in coming on again. Tuesdays are great for me too, because I got a lot of time to kill. So I'd love to get on more frequently and, and shoot the shit. 
I mean, I'm looking we'd like, forward. We'd to like it. to actually start at one o'clock one of these weeks, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, Sergio, anything you want to add before we take off? Nah, man. Thanks, Sean. It's good to see you again, buddy. Even though it's through uh, virtually. Um, yeah, man. Let's get know, some training in. When are we gonna sure, get a bro. fight? When are we gonna get a fight between you two? Can Sergio? You, can, you, you can cut that listen, anymore? listen, listen. Catch me to one fifty. Yeah, not. I probably not. A, I probably not make that. That's one. <laughs> And, and B, listen, I got too much love for Sean. Um, that's one of my only rules, man. Unless you pay me, something would be ridiculous. Even is then, that I why probably you two, would is that, is that the, I mean, not to, like, be funny, but is that the real reason why you two have never matched up? Just because... Honestly, no. I, yeah, honestly, yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, people know. I, I, I wouldn't. But at least me personally, I would never even say. To, I, I'm not, especially on the regional circuit. It's not. It's stupid to fight somebody you know. I mean, unless it's. For yeah, and we trained a lot together. It was never even. A, I don't think. It was I, even, I don't think it was ever even an option to me. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you guys have definitely been like, especially when we They're were following Kay Sherry so much. You guys crossed paths quite a bit and never actually fought. And I was no, always we, curious we, about we, that. We, we, we literally, no, I, I'm serious when I say this. We literally trained for a significant t- amount of time um, back in the day when, you know, Jim Miller was on his tear. I still can't believe he never got a lightweight title shot. He, mm-hmm. What do you win, like nine in a row or some shit? Yeah, he fell to number one contender fight two times. Yeah, so. Anthony had, uh, it wasn't Pettis, it was... Uh, Benson Henderson and then uh, Cerrone or Diaz, yeah. He's just he was always that one fight away. He lost his last fight, but he was winning a couple before that. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, search, I'm sorry, uh, Sean, real quick, before you take off, uh, you want to give anybody links to follow you and how to, like, follow everything? Uh, yeah, just, just follow me on social media. Keep it simple. It's uh, srock125 for all my social media. And, uh, you know, definitely if you guys want to check out my last fight, send me a private message and I'll send it over. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully, I'm yeah, s- send me that when you get a chance, bro. I want to yeah, watch 100%. it. I will definitely win, lose, or draw. My big thing is is making sure I put on an exciting fight, whether I get whipped or I put on a beat, you know, put on a nice show. It's just win, lose, or draw. I just always want to go out and have a good fight. I don't want anybody telling me or talking about me ever being in a boring fight. Obviously, I like to dominate and have those highlight real knockouts and submissions, but you know, it's all about winning and being entertained you know so as long as i can keep doing that man that's all that that's all that matters yeah last quick question sean before you go when was the last time you you lost to a legit flyweight because i know you lost to that kid nick home but he didn't make weight or some shit he was a big like right yeah when, when um, did you lose to a legit flyweight well i lost to my in brave in 2018 to the kid vala Murad, who he actually won their title but he missed weight oh no. for, the, for the title Forget that oh no. i'm talking about like a legit like when, when was when was it like flyweight where you were just because I, I don't every, see every flyweight that I ever fought. Well, I I would say that the kid that was in the UFC that, that um he just he stopped fighting from Team Alpha Male when I took the fight on short notice for CFFC where I won the that, first. That round was one. Him. Yes, yes. Morales. That was probably the only one. Every other what was flyweight. His name? What was his name again? Morales. Morales. Joseph Morales. Morales. He doesn't train what, anymore. What happened with him? He got a, a performance. He got a submission of the night, his his first entry into the UFC. And then I think he went like two and two or two and one or something like that. He lost He lost his last two fights. He, he lost to the champ now, Figueroa. Yeah. Figueroa. And then he lost to Eric Shelton by a split decision. And uh, I, well, I mean, that I was think, only two years ago. Um, but I yeah. think what happened is during when they were going to cut the division, what they were doing is two guys fought, the loser got their walking papers, and they kept doing that to weed out the division. That's what happened to Dustin Ortiz, Zach McCoskey. That's tough because it was a split decision, too, that he lost. Yeah. A lot of the guys got cut that should have still be there, you know? So he's not even fighting. That's only two years ago. He might pop up somewhere again. Yeah, he doesn't train anymore. I talked to some guys from Team Alpha Male, and they haven't even seen him at the gym. Wow. Yeah. Some people, you know, life gets in the way sometimes, you know? Yeah, well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Do it again. Right, thanks, I'll see you next week, Sean. Anytime you thanks, want to hop on, just let me know and I'll get take, you an invite, bro. All right, take care, man. All right, thank gentlemen, you. have a good day. This is Art yep, of the Podcast. We'll see y'all soon.